Morning, mate. Good morning, Silas. How you doing? Pretty good. Just uh, kind of mad scramble to get in here. I just dashed through the front door here. <laughs> <laughs> I just did the same thing, too. We've been uh, cleaning up all morning. Um, I was doing really important work. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> all right. Well, thank you for uh, joining me. Yeah, thank you. Hi, hey, guys. Hey, Ted. How are you, Silas? I'm well, how about you? Good. This is exciting. Yeah, I'm excited for this. <clears throat> me too. Well, um, might as well just start with the opening question. Why the heck have you been, you've been using the software already? <laughs> <laughs> Mustard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make you defensive or anything. Go on the yeah. defensive. No, it's fine. We're just not friends anymore. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I don't really have a good excuse. I mean, it seems like everybody's used it, really likes it, and it's. I can only imagine it's going to be a time saver. Uh, I think that part of my problem is that we got really busy June 1st doing whole home evaluations, uh, initial evaluations, if you will, and uh, um, I just kind of revert back to when I'm in that kind of, you know, get it done mode. Yeah. I've been doing this sort of thing for 12 years ish. And over that time, the process for that initial visit has, you know, changed, but it's been a slow and ongoing change. Uh, and so it just feels like home. So to add an unknown component, and, and like I've said in emails, probably an irrational fear of just, you know, I'm adding some stuff that I don't know. So it's going to double my time or something like that. So, um, for what it's worth, uh, like I've said before, I'm not anti doing it this way or, or using the software. I just need to get probably a little bit of it under my belt. And there's always, always something that seems to be taking precedent over, you know, learning the process. So can you tell us a little bit about your process now? Yeah. Um, Basically, I mean, a lot of the things that I've been doing for a long time really mirror uh, the initial that we're doing here. Um, and why I have sought out this program is uh, to better have a process for communicating with the client and honestly, the sales portion. You know, like I can go evaluate a house with the best of them. I can figure out the leakages. I can test the heating cooling system. I can figure out where the problem areas are, what should be done about it. Where we have traditionally failed here in my marketplace is, and this goes all the way back to being a third party independent, you know, uh, building performance guy or hers rater or whatever you want to call it. So we'd hand off this information um, to contractors who had been through some sort of vetting process and say, hey, here's what we found. You got leaky duct. You got, you know, insulation needs to be done here. Um, furnace and AC are fine. You know, they're seven or eight years old. They're the right size or close to it. But here's some other major problems. And uh, they they turn around and give a bid for, you know, like a modulating furnace and zoning the system. And we'd go test out and it'd all be worse than when we started. And that was a really awkward position to be in. It just kept happening and happening. So, um that uh, that's kind of how it got started. And so we, you know, moving forward have incorporated more and more involvement in the repairs and trying to, you know, really specify the scope of work that gets quoted, you know, so we're doing a lot of the same things in the, you know, on our end is what you guys are doing in the initial and that's, you know, blower door uh, happens almost without question. Um, you know, the only time it doesn't is if I can't get somebody to pay for it, uh, which is pretty rare. <clears throat> um, and recently, as a part of that process, we've just added thermal imaging. Um, we had, for the longest time, just not really put a lot of, you know, credence in, in uh, thermal imaging. But we found that if for no other reason, it really helps the customer identify and, and understand what you're talking about. You know, the visualization really helps. <clears throat> Um, so we would typically show up at the house and do an interview with the client. Hey, if you could give me the five cent tour of the house, take me around, show me everything. Tell me anything you think is relevant to how your house works, how you feel in your house. 
Um, you know, even if you don't think that it's helpful, mention it. If there's something weird, you know, dust, air leaks, uh, drafts, uh, moisture accumulation, rooms that are more or less comfortable. Are they more or less comfortable in both modes of operation? Yada, yada, yada. So you go through that process. And a lot of times you'll see things and that'll prompt you to have more of a discussion um, about certain things like that. After the interview, it's basically like, okay, you're welcome to tag along with me while I do this process. Or if you got stuff to do, go for it. Uh, I'm going to start down your mechanical room. I'm going to start looking at your heating and cooling equipment. I'm going to run it continuously in whichever mode makes the most sense. I'm going to do some pressure and airflow testing and just find out the general health of the system. Where are we at with it? What's it doing? Um, that sort of thing. Um, and then as that process goes, you basically, in, in our process, we start in the basement, start measuring the home, working our way up. Uh, room by room, if applicable. Otherwise, at least for a block load. Um, getting things like ceiling heights, insulation types, framing types, um, window types, all that kind of stuff. All the, all the good stuff that goes into a load. Um, internal loads. <clears throat> so um, what about uh, like closing ratio for this process? Uh, how often do you get in the jobs and ballpark size? For HGAC 2.0? Um, well, no, more for what you're doing now. What, what I'm doing now? Yeah. Um, Boy, that's a great, that's a great question. I definitely don't have the tracking chops that you guys do, um, which is again, part of the, part of the appeal here. Uh, but just, you know, kind of anecdotally based on what I think, um, you know, when we talk to somebody about doing an initial valuation, they're usually the folks that have the problems. And so those are, those are flying off the shelves, if you will. Uh, and that's why we've been so busy with that. Um, and then, uh, you know, any, any number of things that could come from that anywhere from simple, you know, duck mods in the, in the basement to improve the existing equipment all the way out to a full system renovation with duck mods, air balancing, duck leakage improvement, uh, duck ceiling, okay. um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and we've had recently a couple really big projects in the $20,000 um, neighborhood would be really big for us um, with a couple uh, in fact, we just did one. We were playing, we finished the replacement not last week, but the week before, and it was two um, full system replacements. Um, inverter, air conditioners, uh, offered a client on the heat pump. So you knew uh, I was going to ask that. Yeah, I knew. I knew it right away. <laughs> I, to slide I saw your me. micro expression. Oh, crap. I said air conditioner. I need to. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how I can get through this conversation without getting into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you can't so just don't try i uh, see ted over there making notes like i'm gonna hammer him on this <laughs> <laughs> well i mean so where you are is really uh, well so it, it's it's common and it's also particularly common with people that already have building performance chops because mm -hmm. you already have a process like you said that feels like home um so it's difficult to change that mm -hmm. so you're not the only one that's here um so don't, don't, don't feel bad about it. Plus what, whenever it's learning something new, if you're busy and you know, it's going to take a little mind share to do it, what gets kicked down the road? Sure. Plus, plus you don't want to risk when you have a whole lot of momentum and you're in, in a high season, is it actually is probably a bad idea to be, um, you know, potentially throwing wrenches and sand in the works because, you don't want to risk that, that downward momentum, a wheel flying off. Right. Yeah. So there's, you know, this, what we, what we need to do is figure out a way to make this transition a toe in the water and, and allow for that toe in the water to happen during high season. So we don't have to wait for low season for everybody. And maybe that's what you can help us do today Yeah, is, yeah. is figure out, you know, okay, so these were the barriers, um, the way the workaround for those barriers is probably to do, you know, find sort of the ideal low risk situation and deviate from the current process 
on that specific one and see how it goes. Sure. But keep the rest of these going the same way they are over here. Yeah. Well, I mean, hence we suggest do this for a friend, family, CSR, whatever, where you can screw it up and laugh <laughs> instead of being like, I'm getting paid to do this. I'm supposed to look like I know what I'm doing. And here I am, you know, bumbling around. Don't mind me. I'm just Mr. Magoo. <laughs> well, actually, so Sandler likes the idea of looking like Mr. Magoo. And so getting people to make that switch, um, ideally, you don't look like you know what you're doing all the time because that can have the potential of uh, the okay, not okay theory being too okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you want the the client to see you kind of goofing up a little bit, or like I'm new. Sorry, like so. If some of this isn't totally smooth, you know, please forgive me. And then you buy yourself grace. Where if they expect you to be perfect through the whole thing, um, uh, it's more pressure. So, sure. uh, but anyway, th th that said, it's good to run through this once and you see what you're in for because um, it's. Uh, so, so before we go any further, what are you charging for this thing? that you're doing now, this uh, initial evaluation? Um, when it includes a blower door, it's between usually between three and $400. Although if I got into a scenario where it was a very large house or multiple systems, it would just go up from there. And, you know, I could see it being six, $700 or so. And that's a pretty deep discount from what I used to offer it when I was uh, a third party consultant. I mean, it would be common for us to do that same exact scope on an average size home for about 900 bucks. And it sounds to me like this, what you're doing. Um, so you understand that basically what we did is we took what was kind of a science, the science project of home performance yep. and broke it into smaller steps. Sure. And, um, very, and we use the medical practice as, as the example where, you know, so, if somebody that's really, really sick is going to go straight to diagnostics and testing and ICU and all the rest of that stuff. But for most people, the better process is go see your general practitioner, do an interview. Yep. They'll, they'll measure you, weigh you, maybe they'll take your blood. Um, it's very lightweight diagnostics, interview heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we've done that where we are interview heavy, lightweight diagnostics. And the lightweight diagnostics in, in this process for us is um, both, it's important, as you know, to understand the house and have a little bit of an understanding of the house but it's also important to have an understanding of the situation that the patient is in with regard to their relationship to the house. Sure. Because, you know, hey, the house is going up for sale in three months is a completely different recommendation process mm -hmm. than we're, we are going to live here for the next 20 years. Right. And so we need to get a really clear understanding of of the relationship between the patient and the house before we make further recommendations about diagnostic and so we've broken that into multiple steps because um, the first step we learn what we need to learn about the situation so that we can make good secondary step recommendations and it feels to me like maybe you're combining those two still. There's probably truth in that. There, there is truth in that. Uh, and that's, I think, uh, again, part of the reason I'm drawn to this process is to get that interview heavy, you know, get to the bottom of what the customer is actually wanting, looking for, you know, and, and then back off of the, you know, immediate, like, let's get all the info about the house. A little bit. Exactly. Okay. Um, this is good for us to all sort of understand at this point so that yeah, we're on the other side. of what we're thinking and, and we have an understanding.
think, but whether our thinking is correct. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Nate. Okay. Uh, Silas, did you have a chance to pull the metrics together? I do have them here. Okay, sweet. Um, I'm just going to talk you through. Um, uh, un- unless uh, I, I can type the stuff in if you want, or you can run it. It's probably more useful for you if you run the software, though. Okay. Um, so you want to pull up HVAC 2.0 and uh, share your screen? Oh, wait, I have to make you a guest. You're a, a host. Okay, now you can share your screen. Sorry, well, you're you're on the on spot. Uh, <laughs> I take it that you're doing a fair amount of, of modeling and diagnostics for people. Yeah. So this is a lost leader at this point. Pretty much. Are there often two of you in the house for, for this process? No, it's just me. Just you? Yep. Does it pretty much eat the day? Uh, no, I'm uh, I'm in and out of there uh, typically in a three to four hour time frame. Um, in in the past, that would have been a five or six hour thing. But we've uh, you know when you do it long enough and you figure out a way to kind of cut out all the unnecessary stuff. So would you say that you're at a very high level of um, experience and expertise that's unlikely to be trainable? Uh, sorry, you're kind of cutting out there for a second. Um, basically, I think he's asking, are you well above average as far as building performance practitioners? Uh, you know, I think so. I think you are um, there's too. not a lot of us around here to really gauge that, but it seems like when I'm yeah. on forums and stuff and we're talking, it just seems like uh, I can be helpful a lot. Yep. So, but that's kind of my gauge. And I mean, it's, we've interacted plenty at this point. I know you're above average. Um, Ted's point in asking that is basically, is this something that could, could somebody be trained to your level quickly? Oh, if, uh, if you had no. three months, could you get to your level? <clears throat> no. About two years. Eh, you you could start getting there, I think. Um, yeah. I phrase it this way because I have done some training for some folks uh, that were in my organization to kind of be the field, you know, get the field data folks. And I can teach people what to do really fast. But teaching them why we do it, um, it takes a lot longer figure out it took me a lot longer to figure that out when I was learning what to do so yeah kind of that start with why concept um but <laughs> I yeah. I agree that drove me nuts in my BPI training they kept saying what to do and I'm like well why tell me yeah. why. I want to <laughs> yeah. understand why I'm doing this um, yeah I, uh, I kind of struggled with the not. BPI training the first time around um the classroom was easy it was the getting in the field and like really understanding that kind of stuff and, and why so it's interesting so, uh, it's, well, anyway, so the, I mean, a big chunk of what we have worked on building into HVAC 2.0 is that it's, uh, um, it, it's very basic um, for, uh, to learn. So all these steps, like it, you're going to be like, this is easy, but somebody who's a newbie will be, they'll, they'll be sweating a little bit, but they'll, they'll get through it. Um, sure. So, okay. Well, yeah, let's start. You already put somebody in there. So let's yeah, click This it. is actually the one I was going to use. Uh, I think oh, I sweet. Well, then let's just do it. Um, yeah, so the only the only thing that I want to say is um, our goals is to help people with very high levels of expertise and experience grow. 
And in order for that to happen, you need to be able to hire people that are worthwhile and not have to worry about spending two years on them. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah. great Okay. And so, uh, so our I'm going to check this. Process, this may not be. Our process is designed with that in mind. Do you want to put another one in? That's totally fine. Uh, this is the right one. It's just the wrong address. <laughs> so oh, well, it, it doesn't matter. Um, no big deal, right? For our purposes today, it doesn't matter. So oh. click the initial consultation uh, view edit. So I'm, I'm going to cheat to some degree for time's okay. sake. Yeah. And we're basically just going to fill out the stuff that needs to be in for generating the report. Sure. Um, there's a ton of questions in here, uh, <laughs> as, as you know. Like uh, I warn people, like, look, we're going to be here for like an hour, so settle in. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, but, but then what was it? Tanner Dickinson, or Dickerson, his, uh, uh, he did a, a practice one with his best friend's parents and uh, his best friend's dad after a little while is like you got to stop asking these questions you're making me think about stuff that i never knew bothered me that actually bothers me cooling um i mean that's that's the goal of this is yeah, let's, so. let's uncover everything we possibly can um because you don't want to miss a goal and then later they're like oh well this room is also bad um and you need to at least be able to be like, look, I asked you three times. You didn't tell me. I can't help you with something you don't tell me about. Right. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's the goal of there being so many questions here. Plus, pretty much every question in here, if it seems weird, I got bit. By not asking it. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So they're, they're in here, even if it's just, you know, like quick no, like, you know, it's like, I don't know, like all the STD questions or something like that. When you go to, to give blood, you're just like, oh, for crying out loud, I know you got to ask these, but the answer is no. Uh, <laughs> I'm a straight arrow. So anyway, okay. Well, so scroll on down. Um, I'm trying to think what's the first thing. It's probably going to be, uh, you're going to look for section four. We got to put energy use in. So there's this whole presentation that you give them to kind of get them up to speed because there's always sure. one spouse that's there because you asked them to be, not because they want to be. Gotcha. Um, oh, actually, I take it back. We need to put in how many square feet the house is. Okay. Let me grab. I haven't done it quite this way. So Oops. I'm usually going through this in front of a client. So we got 2713 for square footage. That's fine. So yeah, put that in that bottom field there. And this can be close. Like it doesn't need to be 2713. You know, you could put 2600 or 2800. It'd be fine. Um, gotcha. Just trying to get a general idea. Um, uh, okay. So scroll on down then. I think we're going to look for, you're going to see, yeah. So there's finding objectives round one. Keep going. Um, so there's comfort and you're going to look for number four, which is efficiency. So that's asking a bunch of questions about comfort issues. Um, there sure. we are and so forth. Uh, then you want to put in the annual kilowatt hours of electricity. <laughs> Did you ever use the Google form, Silas? No, no, I mean, I, I perused it, but I never used it. Okay, well, this, this is the Google form, only it's built into uh, a piece of software. Gotcha. That's interesting. What do you I find may, interesting? Uh, well, I may be having a hard time finding the utility bills that I know I have for them. Well, I'll tell you what, for, for demonstration purposes, just put something in. So take a guess, are they 10,000 kilowatt hours? Yeah, it was pretty high because they've been using um, electric heaters. <clears throat> oh yeah, so it might even be more than 10. Um, oh, it's actually, yeah, last field there on the screen, there you go. We'll just start there, that's pretty close. Yep, and then gas, uh, how do you do it in therms? 
Yes. <clears throat> so click gas therms. See the little radio button right above there? There you go. And then ballpark. Let's see. That's not too bad for a house that size. Not great. Not too bad. Yeah, they're actually, <clears throat> wherever this data is, I noticed the trend was that the gas was going down and the electricity was going up. It was becoming less and less usable to meet comfort because it's a kind of a mess. <clears throat> so got it. more and more space heaters. Well, that's really interesting though. So you, you got multiple years of data. Yes. Yep. Yeah. They sent me four. Yep. That's, it, would, it, it would make sense. They're like, you know, the only thing that works is managing space heaters. So we'll just run around and turn these on and on. Right. It, that is funny too, because we joke, like if somebody's budget is low, it's like window units and space heaters for you. Um, so they've been using that and now they're ready to do it right. Um, uh, okay. And so the, the calculated EUI there. there I, found, I found it. I was looking under the wrong, the wrong. Uh, okay. How close are your numbers? Uh, let's see here. Yep. About... 13, anywhere from 13 to 17,000 kilowatt hours. So not, not quite on there. Um, and then uh, Therms was actually quite a bit less. So it's about okay. 800 to 1,000 Therms and 13 to 17,000 kilowatt hours. So I'd probably just split the difference on that, do like 15,000 kilowatt hours and 900 Therms. And you'll watch it change the EUI there. So we yeah. went from 60 something to 52. Mm -hmm. um, that's energy use intensity. So that's how much energy the house uses on site. Um, gotcha. And as, I mean, you're going to get used to this looking at a bunch of these in your climate zone. You're probably going to be a bit higher than we are because you're a touch colder. Um, but like down in Florida, if it's electric use, it's usually much, uh, it's much lower number. Sure. So Florida numbers, they might be 15 or 20 routinely, where 15 or 20 is where we get to with our best upgrades here in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And I doubt you're going to get much lower than that either. I mean, you're going to have sure. to do silly things to a house. Um, so, okay, so those are the key things there. Scroll down a little bit further. There's a couple of uh, pictures here that we need to make optional that are not presently. Okay. Um, so see that furnace model uh, photo? Yep. Uh, Checkbox. Click that. See how it says this is not optional. We have to check those. There's the AC coil right below there too. We don't need to put in that. So you can keep scrolling. Mm -hmm. Static pressure worksheet built right in. Uh, okay. Hold up one second. Turn HVAC off. And then there's a couple more. This field is not optional below the model number photo. For the water heater. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, make sure you click those or it won't let us move to the next step. We're probably going to remove this, but uh, uh, that should be doing it. So, yeah, it, this you, you see how we're training the newbies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, take a picture of the water heater, um, uh, you know, step back far enough, and then uh, so we can see where the water heater is in the basement, get your model number. Take a picture of the top. Are there melted grommets, which are the, the easiest sign of backdrafting? Sure. Um, uh, so uh, take a picture of the flue pipe <coughs> going uphill like it should, uh, or did somebody do something stupid with it, which we never see, ever, <laughs> right? Um, no. Uh, so, I mean, one of the key goals of this is if you are training someone, you can send them out there. And if they take halfway decent pictures, you can save their butt. Sure. Um, and the same thing goes with the next step, the, the C path, when, when you do the full audit. Um, when Ted was training me, because I, w I was a terrible auditor, and now, frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm a B-plus auditor. Um, like, there's people that are way more technical and, and better at doing energy audits than me. Um, but but they're also, trying to... he didn't know the difference between a boiler and a furnace. <laughs> he was right? So, I mean, there was that, uh, but I mean, it's, it, I, I took a bunch of pictures and then Ted would be like, well, you didn't get this, this, or this. So we started creating a checklist. Um, sure. 
And then the next time I didn't miss those photos. Uh, and the first couple of ones we did, he was writing the work scopes for me. He was telling me what to do. Uh, he, like, I, I was an idiot there with a the camera and he basically did everything else. And at the beginning, that's what you're going to be able to do with a newbie is send them out there with this checklist and be like, you need to go through this checklist before you leave and make sure you get all of these photos. Uh, yeah, so the whole process is like uh, <laughs> Glamour shots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a shot you, I hope, is figure out that you can hire 15 bucks an hour the initial and now the initial longer ends up being um the thing that you call the doctorate for so you can be doing more stuff right yeah and you're breaking up pretty horribly ted i don't know if you can switch routers or anything um but yeah the, the goal of this process is to make it so that somebody you pay 15 bucks an hour can do almost all of it and you can just be there in the office um helping make sure that things aren't coming off the rails yeah, and that's essentially the goal here is uh, I'm, I'm building this, you know, HVAC 2.0 or home performance side of the business essentially from the foundation up. And right now it's just me. And, uh, you know, we've had conversations about what does it look like when there's a human being in the field or two or three and how am I organizing that? And then what, the, what do my daily tasks look like after that? And uh, frankly, the, the market here is untapped and huge for this process. Um, and it just boils down to, can we get this snowball rolling down the hill far enough to justify that first person? And then from there, you know, and it sounds like that's kind of exactly what you're looking at, you know, this process being able to achieve. So that's, that's great yeah. news. Yeah. We're, we're starting with it where it's going to be mainly smaller contractors that are probably going to be signing on, but yep. we're trying to keep in mind, what if you plug this into a $5 million contractor? Um, what will happen. So sure. uh, we don't know for sure how all that's going to work, but we're trying to build the infrastructure. Um, all right. Well, let's keep scrolling down. We need to put in the blower door number and the, uh, the Pascal reading. Let's see. Yeah, keep scrolling a little bit. Yeah. Give me just one second here. Gonna... No problem. Your phone's blowing up. Find photos all right here we go there we go you don't have to worry about checking those but again those are training before somebody goes and turns it on so gotcha. if they don't turn it on you can give them a hard time um, so that's the guess. Um, so we, we, we play a game. Um, you get to look at the energy bills and then uh, you uh, play prices, right rules of what is the, the blower door. So I fairly routinely will guess 3000 and the wife will guess 3001. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, so you just make, you make them laugh about it. So yeah, put it in the, the next field there too. That's the one that's actually looking at. That's the guess. Sorry. Yeah, I got what you're saying. Oh, it's all good. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then the next one below, uh, you got the 50, I bet. So put in 50 Pascals. All right. Keep scrolling. Let's put in a couple of zonals. Okay. So click add. I didn't add actually measure the zonal here, but they were. So this house has a walk up. It's a two and a half story. It's got a walk up attic and, and just clo door closure and feeling the amount of air was blow your hat off. I mean, it was yeah. out of control. Well, so let's, um, uh, let's put that in. So click add new item on the living area and put third story or attic, whatever you want. Um, and if you didn't take a reading, it's still, it's going to be 25 or higher is my sure. bet. So that'll be 50% outdoors. And let's add one more. Um, so it lost that. Yeah, you can put it there. You add a bedroom too. But once you click that, the, you have to add it. See over to the right with actions, it has the plus and minus. That's how you add. Oh, I got you. Sorry. So, I, uh, well, it's all good. Um, I'm glad that you did it that way. <laughs> 
Uh, but so the bedroom, add another bedroom just for the heck of it. Okay. So just hit plus and do like master and make it 12 or something like that. So that would be a real stinker because that would be almost 25% outdoors. Right. Um, okay. So that these yeah. will show up on the report, which is why I'm having you put them in. All right. So keep scrolling. I'm trying to think what is next. I think goals are going to be next. Uh, nuts. You call in originally, but then there he is. Yeah, sorry about that. My uh, internet connection had a fart. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens. No. Um, all right. So, yeah, it keeps scrolling down. Um, think next up is going to be goals. So this is the same kind of interface thing. So uh, what was the biggest thing that this client wanted to fix? So the very first thing on their list was the third floor walk-in attic is a room that they, it's like the room that they fell in love with the house for. So oh. it's finished up there. They want it to eventually be the master bedroom. And right now it's the, that's where they store all the vinyl records and there's a TV up there and they just want to be up there and hanging out. And it is really, really uncomfortable up there in both modes of operation, heating and cooling mode, uh, but especially uh, cooling mode. Okay. Just, just a mess up there. So that's going to be their big goal is going to be, um, be, be able to use the third floor. Yeah. So, and so the, the goal, yeah, be able to use. You want this to be more action oriented? Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you can put it in whatever way you want, but, uh, you know, it, it, when you have it on the report, you want to have them be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, sure. Like, be able to use the, the, uh, the attic. Uh, for whatever we want and be comfortable <laughs> or whatever it might be. So see that that's more of a pain statement. Um, and this is tough because as energy auditors, we tend to be very Spock mm -hmm. and we need to let the emotion out. Right. Um, and we need to get the emotion from the clients. Um, Cause the, the, the more. You know, if, if you reverse them a couple of times, they will put it in emotional terms. They will say, we love this attic space and it's unbearably uncomfortable. So we, a lot of the time we just can't be up here. And then what you'll do is you will take those words, word for word and put it here. Got it. Because that is the repeat back trigger. That's the Sandler repeat back trigger. So, and you've been listening to Sandler? Yes. Yeah, I've listened to both the books. Um, the ones you guys recommended off the bat. I can't remember the names. Riding a bike at a seminar or whatever. Uh, and then the, the new one, Selling to Homeowners or whatever it is. Um, I've listened to both of those. I like them both a lot. In fact, I listened to uh, the first one twice all the way through it started a third time and kind of uh burned out on it <laughs> a little bit but i'll come back to it again um and I, i'll probably listen to the other one uh the homeowner one uh again too before it's all ruined and, and that's just the way to do it is, is listen to it till you can't and and you know pick a few chapters that you like and listen to those over and over again and that and that stuff will sink in and then you'll be able to understand with um, surgeon accuracy why you, you want to uh, do a good job um, taking notes from what they say. Uh, there are a lot of reasons. One of which is when, when you say somebody's words back to them, it's a great compliment. It says, I, I, what you have is important to me and I listened. Yeah. And, and in this field, 
um, listening and showing that what they have to say is important is a tremendous competitive advantage because many people don't. In fact, one of my buddies recently replaced his equipment. And he said, none of these people gave a shit what I had to say. It was <laughs> yeah. astonishing. And Here's so, your quote. And so it's like, how, how do you want, how, how do you expect a $14,000 system? If right. you go in there and you think you're Kreskin and, and say, look at your child, what you have to say doesn't have any meaning, go sit in the corner. I mean, that's the person writing the freaking check. Yeah. Yeah. Man, and, that's, uh, you're, you're killing me softly with those words. <laughs> so, <laughs> I happen to do a lot of, uh, a lot of talking, not much listening, like, you know, two mouths, one ear, uh, instead of vice versa. Uh, you know, bad, bad habits abound. <clears throat> well, and this process really helps with that because one of the things is you got to stay in your compartment, which means you should not be talking solutions. Right. And a lot of times we get excited about solving problems. And so we start talking solutions and, and that is verboten. That is not allowed um, in, in HVAC 2.0. You, you stay in your compartment when, when you're the doctor and a sick patient comes in, you don't start talking about chemotherapy. You, you, that's, that's actually malpractice in the medical profession. Right. And so what, what we're doing is we're, we're defining it as malpractice in our field too, is spend a lot of time getting understanding of the problem. And don't get the patient or yourself confused by brainstorming solutions. There is a time to brainstorm solutions and it's not in front of the client the first time you meet them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, As it were, this particular house, I, I really was excited about, I mean, there was a lot of questions like, well, could we do this? And I was like, well, we're not there yet. Like, oh, good. I, I'm really awesome. putting that into practice on this particular one. This was really kind of the one that kicked off when I was going to really start implementing this stuff and make a, make a, a true effort at it. Um, and I don't know, it might've even been, this might've been before we had this software tool. Um, but yeah. So anyway, for what that's worth, um, I'm all, I'm all on board there because um, there's a lot of times where I just have to flat out tell people like that we got to know what we're dealing with before we can get into how we're going to fix it. You know I mean? Just plain terms. Just, yeah. There's a lot of stuff I can tell from looking at the raw data and from the conversation with you. But um, you know, if I, if I start just saying stuff, we're going to get off track so fast. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. So, so is this an eight or a nine or a 10? Yeah, there we go. I would say a nine. Um, the only reason I would say it's not a fix it now um, was because um, they are uh, they're they're basically from the from the interview they're basically like this is this is our indefinite future home we don't ever see moving here unless circumstances change and uh, you know they're both teachers so it was early summer so they have kind of the summer to review things and. It's, it was, they had identified that it was as much fact finding for them as it was for me um, as, mm -hmm. as we're going through the process. So they really, really want to get it handled. They want to do it as quickly as they can, but they also understand that um, there's value in the process. So this, from that, from that standpoint, they're really kind of ideal folks to be working with on this because they, they value the process and they, don't, they didn't really even know what the process was, uh, so to speak. So. Yeah, you're getting there. So what other goals do they have? <clears throat> um, so can I drop down a new one yep, here? Yep, okay. yep, there you go. And then <clears throat> um, so the next biggest thing is um, the HVAC in general for the house. Um, they're concerned about its longevity. They're having some trouble with it. They're sinking repair dollars into it. Um, they know it's not efficient. They know it doesn't work very well. Like I didn't have to do any fancy testing to tell them that, but the numbers definitely backed up <laughs> that. So, um, so worried about 
HVAC failing soon. Yeah, yeah, and that and that expense, and then what to do about it. Do we just take what we have now and put new stuff in, or is there something better that we don't know about? Mm-hmm. And through that process, is that part of how we solve the upper floor? You know, so <clears throat> um, a lot of these kind of intermingle and, and tangle a little bit. But uh, that was the second big one for them was, you know, what do we do with our HVAC? How do we plan for that? You know, what's the best solution out there? Knowing they they know full well that there's a lot of new technology instead of just gas furnace, split air conditioner. How, um, how would you phrase it then? Uh, that, in, in a emotional uh, way. Yeah. So I, I guess from that standpoint, the thing that sticks out to me is it's sort of a risk removal. Um, okay. Like there's risk in do if we pick something that's not the right thing, then we've wasted lots of resources that we could have used in a better way. Yeah. So I guess to me, that would be the, the, you know, the mental or the, the, the pain portion is just knowing what to do and optimizing that choice maybe with the HVAC. I don't know if that really fits. Well, so it would be w- worried about HVAC failing and. Oh, it would probably be too. Probably be too worried about HVAC failing, yeah. worried about yes, making the wrong decision at replacement. Yeah, good point, Ted. If, if you're like, boy, I don't quite know how to put this in one, it's probably two. Got it. Don't, don't be afraid to make more goals. Like, I, I love it when I have eight or nine goals. Love it. You know, yeah, I don't want to make a 15-year mistake is sort of a common way of getting the point across. Sure. Yeah, so pick your number. And from experience, if there isn't at least one eight, um, there's not much pain. Just Fixed from experience. Um, uh, and that, that's fine. Like, it, yeah. this is oftentimes very helpful for people to understand, oh, this is an annoyance. Yeah. So if it's an annoyance and it isn't worth much money to fix, shut up. Right. Um, if it's a real problem, you're willing to spend money. Right. Uh, and so it's, it's good to help people kind of understand that um, as they go. And, and since you're getting paid for this, um, if you help somebody arrive at the realization that they don't want to spend real money solving a problem, you're getting paid to help people. And that's pretty awesome. Even if it means you're not going to get a huge job from it. Sure. No, I, that is one of my favorite parts of this is no more free consulting. You know, I, I, we always use the phrase around here. I don't need the practice. I don't need the practice. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've, I've literally been in thousands of houses. I've tested thousands of heating and cooling systems. I, I don't need the practice anymore. And if people go through this process and listen to what we say, they're going to end up with a better product, a better everything than if they have. And so um, there's value in that. And there's no reason that I need to go in with my hat in hand and say, well, I could spend three hours in your house doing some testing and then I can talk at you for two hours and then you can pick the cheaper guy anyway. So right, <laughs> sort of want to iron that out of the process, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the classic thing, man. You, you, you do all the upfront work, you write their specification, you solve their problems, and then they go to the next guy and they're like, so can you do this for cheaper? Uh, interestingly enough, um, here last season, last cooling season, um, I was on the very, very front end of, of offering this up as a secondary solution to a free estimate. And I, I upsold the $300 home evaluation, blower door, system testing uh, on the spot during the free estimate and uh, went through, did the whole ball of wax, came back, presented all the information, and gave an estimate for uh, HVAC replacement. And he went with another guy who was like $1,100 cheaper. So he forfeited $300 to save $1,100. And guess who called this summer to ask about helping him solve his upper floor comfort issues after? <laughs> so I really did a disservice to me because I lost the sale and to him because he didn't get the problem solved because I wasn't able to sell it to him. Well, yes and no. I mean, if, if you gave him uh, a, a decent path and he chose not to do it, he owns that. Sure. Uh, now, did you do a good job explaining? 
I probably did. That's, that's, that's my point. Like I did all the house stuff and probably didn't do enough of the pain stuff and enough of the, this there process. Right? Okay. It, was, it was definitely uh, my process 1.0 of like, Hey, we're going to really focus on the house and I'm going to throw numbers like static pressure and airflow and why, why our engineered system is going to be better than Joe Blow's system. And all that's, you know, real interesting data if you can understand it and you care. Uh, but it really did. I never, I never, other than knowing his upper floor is uncomfortable and telling him I could fix it. We didn't really dig into any of the other pains. We didn't even really talk about, I mean, that house is rife with opportunity for air sealing and insulation. I just kind of was like, well, you got some envelope problems here. You should look at, here's a guy. Uh, also, here's my bid for your heating cooling. <laughs> you know I mean? It's yeah. textbook, textbook, like, you know, a blinders it's, it's siloed. on. I'm doing, um, yeah, I'm doing an HVAC bid here, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it was a missed we're, opportunity. We're trying to combine silos in what we're doing. So you here. think, so you think this would have, would have kept the job for you? I, I think if I would have been up to par on this and I would have faithfully gone through this process, I think we had a 50% better chance of landing it. And that probably would have been enough. Yeah. I mean, he trusted me enough just from the conversation we had on site to, to pull a $300 trigger knowing full well, apparently that he might've just lit $300 on fire uh, at that point. Cause you know, if he, if he's willing to go through that whole process, learn what he learned and then still say, well, um, I'm going to net out eight plus $800 here. <laughs> yeah. Like going with this other bid, like, you know, we're really talking about the difference of 800 bucks on a, on a 15 year decision. Right. So. Right. Yep. Um, oh, an important point to make here too. We don't think you should uh, offer the 300 bucks as a discount moving forward. You can do what you want, um, but uh, it, you mean like apply it to the sale price? Exactly. Like no, yeah, you're gonna and, pay this. And we I didn't in that case. This was that would be above and beyond the actual pricing. Um, but I was just saying, like you know, the competitive bid being eleven hundred dollars less than mine, yeah. and he spent the three hundred for me. It's essentially you know that direction. So yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, but it's a, uh, it's important. Uh, to stand on the value of it on its own. Yeah. Um, Cause otherwise you're going to be, it, it's going to be hat in hand problem all over again. Yeah. Um, please, please, please let me test your house. Like, <laughs> uh, look, do you want to test your house and figure out what the hell to do? Or do you just want to change this? And when it doesn't work, you can call me yeah. and I'll tell you, we got to change it again. <laughs> yeah. um, so do you want to waste 10 or $15,000 or do you want to pay 300 bucks now and, and remove most of that risk? Uh, yeah. Your choice. I don't care. Right. Um, no, that's not my money, money. Not my problem. Not my uncomfortable house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't own it. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Put that in and let's keep moving. Uh, what What other things did, did did this client want to solve? The other The other two things were um, I'm not going to try to phrase them in a pain statement right yet, but uh, utility costs were a concern because that's okay. high bills. Definitely part of the monthly budget. Uh, in their case, it's a good chunk of it and uh, indoor air quality and environmental concerns. Okay. Um, so this to me was a, a prime, so I don't wanna jump ahead, we'll, I'll stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm gonna jump in here on the utility costs and say, looks like we probably save you $20 a month on your utility bill. How much is it worth to you to save $20 a month on your utility bill? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 15. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's probably going to cost you between 50 and a hundred dollars a month to save $20 a month on your utility bill. Yeah. How does that make you feel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so what we're going to do is fix the house and then energy savings are going to be ancillary. But when you make energy savings a primary goal, it, it, it um, perverts your design and puts you in a place where you probably have to live uncomfortably the rest of your life. And so why don't we just say any energy savings are going to be um, frosting on the cake. And that's a great point, and I would wholeheartedly agree there. 
I can't even remember the last time like discussing one of these things with somebody on the phone where I was like, and we're going to save you a bunch of money in utilities. It's usually the call doesn't get generated because of utility cost savings. Yeah. And I sometimes even forget to mention the frosting. <laughs> so we've been tracking our, our projects and the um, payback on these projects is 50 to a thousand years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, very, very rarely is it less than 50 years. It's, it's almost like getting struck by lightning. Right. And, um, you know, when oil prices at $4 and 50 cents a gallon, you can probably sniff some savings sure. if they're heating with oil. Yep. But natural gas right now is super cheap. Electricity isn't very expensive in most places of the country. Um, they're giving so the away whole, utilities here in Iowa. You know, I think we're nine cents a kilowatt hour and like 68 cents a therm. Wow. You know, if, if electricity, if, if electricity and gas were water, you couldn't afford to justify the faucet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's silly cheap, uh, how cheap our energy is in the U S in general. Uh, so let's uh, think the house. It will save you energy. And that and that'll be nice because it'll help pay for the project. But it's not going to pay for the project. Right. It's going to help pay for the project. Yeah. So if you don't have other reasons that you want to fix this house, like you know, indoor air quality is making you sick or uncomfortable anyway, um, and and you can't use parts of your house that you're paying to maintain and taxes on, and that kind of feels dumb, and then, you know, I would like to discourage you from wasting your time and money. And I'm happy to waste your time and money, but I want you to, I want you to hold me to account for it. Yeah. Well, I want you to understand what, what the, the ramifications of that decision are. Um, that's a, I'll give you these choices and it's choose your own adventure. I'll do whatever you want. Right. Choose your own adventure. So. Interestingly enough, I had this conversation with our uh, preferred insulation contractor. Mm -hmm. um, they're uh, guys I worked with way back in the day before I went off into the consulting thing. And uh, so they, I, I pretty much work with them exclusively when we're doing envelope improvements. And fast forward a little bit, we got to the point where I had them come out to do some insulation estimates here. Because this, this whole like interview happened in May, I believe. So since then, we've had them out to do some different options estimates for some insulation improvements that we identified. But through that process, um, he brought up to me at one point on a, on a different project that, you know, what the things you're recommending to this customer are going to cost a lot of money and there's probably never going to be a payback. And I said, well, that would be absolutely true if we were quantifying paybacks in energy costs and savings only. But these people want to fix their upper floor the nursery room is 15 degrees warmer than the thermostat set point, And that's unacceptable. So that's an immediate payback day one when we get that to be the, the same as the thermostat set point. Like well, I used to have that same mindset. Like, oh, I can't justify the price of this, of this improvement because it won't save the energy. Uh, and that just flat, I mean, you'll never sell anything. Yes, that's well, the, uh, I top, so, so the next thing is to ask that insulation guy, if he's ever tracked outcomes to his projects and have any of them paid for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, because, you know, you might want to, that if that's how he's selling his projects, he's a fraud and he <laughs> might want to avoid putting himself, unless he's honestly a fraud and he knows it, he might want to avoid putting himself in a position where he looks like a fraud and he doesn't realize it. Sure. Yep. All right. Well, let's, let's finish these off. So we can throw a, a reduce energy bills in here, but you know, what is that? Like a four? Yeah. I mean, it can be in there, but that's one that when, when you send the report, you're going to want to dig and you kind of want to dig at this point, like reverse on like what Ted was saying. All right. So you're probably going to save 20 bucks a month. How much are you willing to spend? to save 20 bucks a month. Environmental concerns. That's one that I tend to push probably too hard on 
Because lots of people say, oh, yeah, it's, I, I want to be environmentally friendly. Wait, it costs money? Yeah, <laughs> sit down. Um, like, I've had enough people do that to me that I'm just frustrated with them. Um, what, what yeah, is but more than colors, they stop being green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, there's, there's been a bunch of studies done on this. Very few people are willing to spend more than 10 or 15 bucks a month to be green. Sure. Um, so that's, that's not real money. Um, it's like, you know, like it's, it's three cups of Starbucks is all it's worth to me. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, the hypocrisy is astonishing in the virtue signaling realm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, having been bit by that a number of times, I tend to be a little bit vicious. <laughs> forcing them to give me a number. So I'm not suggesting you to be that way, but sure. having been bit a number of times, I'm frustrated by the environmental side usually. Yeah. Um, but to air quality, what, what specifically is there that's bothering them? So there's, I don't know how specific I need to get with this, but there's some underlying um, actual health concern with one of the occupants there. Okay. And I didn't push to, to find out because they didn't share specifics with me, but um, there is something going on there that requires actual medical attention on a routine basis. Okay. Um, and so I've just made, I made up five. I, I didn't, uh, I didn't really do my due diligence on finding out exactly what that meant. Um, okay. Well, you might put, I know that there is some actual value there and yeah. uh, we'd be, you know, we'd be, uh, skipping over something they're looking for if we didn't address it so there are a bunch of health questions in the questionnaire there's like okay. does anybody have asthma or allergies and then does sure. anybody have mold or chemical sensitivities gotcha. um for just this sort of thing yeah um, and yeah who, who knows about the HIPAA side of things but uh right. um, uh i mean you want to have some idea like i don't need to know really specifically but i need to know that it's there so that uh, you know like if there's a bunch of issues, you probably need to give them a hard shove towards a ventilating dehumidifier. Like yeah. We need to bring in fresh air. We need to filter the snot out of it. And we need to keep your house drier than I would for other clients. Sure. Um, uh, so we need to, ha we don't have to have this capability, but I'd strongly recommend it. And it's going to be a little bit less expensive if you do that now than if you do it as a standalone job later. Yep. So, okay, moving on. Um, basically, we're going to throw a budget in. So I was really proud of myself because this, uh, this has been one that always has seemed the most awkward for me. Like, hey, what's the budget? You're just trying to get more of my money. That's like the immediate knee jerk. Like, that's what you think is going to happen. Yeah. So this was the first project I've probably ever asked anybody for a budget for. All right. Yeah. And I felt really good about that. And they kind of gave me the like, well, that's kind of why we have you here. So we can figure out what things cost. And, da, 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 da. and I didn't really hammer them on it. Like okay. I really need a number. Um, but what they did share with me is that they are willing because of their love for this home, they are willing to spend all of their available uh, excess resources to achieve their goals. Uh, and I, okay. unfortunately I just don't have any idea if that's, a hundred dollars a month or five hundred dollars a month. Okay, um, so you don't have an actual number, but you at least pushed for budget. Um, yes. Yeah, and the, the tricky part here is, um, and sometimes this helps people. Like, uh, you know, so walking into this house, there are literally millions of permutations of what we can do to the house. Yeah. And so the whole point of this is to narrow you down so there's a few permutations. Right. Um, but it's like, so I want a car. Okay. Do you need to tow something? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Well, is towing 5,000 pounds okay? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Um, how many people do you need to carry? Like, if you're going to buy a car, you can't just go and like pick something off the lot. Right. Um, and you want newer used. You know, like I want a Mercedes, but I only have 10,000 bucks. Um, well, if you want it new, you're an idiot. Um, and if you want it used, we can probably find something. Um, uh, are you willing to put up with some issues in the car? How old are you willing to take? You know, it's this is, it's a matter of value that we're discussing here and not a matter of price Gotcha. and disconnecting those. And that's one nice thing about when you're paid to be there, you can, you can push back a little bit and be like, look, this is a really important piece of what mm -hmm. you're paying me for. Um, like, I really don't care what answer you give me, 
but I just and you don't have to have me you don't have to have me back out ever again so this yeah. isn't like signing away your your children in blood right. you know this is actually for you not for me yeah. and I don't ever you don't ever have to have me back if I make you uncomfortable but you're paying me to help you arrive at certain conclusions and but it is one of the conclusions that I'm helping you arrive at so if you don't want me to do that part of the job I just want to be sure that you understand that you're paying me to do this part of the job because this is a valuable part of the service and now you're telling me that I don't have to do that work. Thank you. So that later on, when you have a report that, that is based on wild ass guesses as opposed to factual information, you can't hold me to account for that fact. This is going to be a crappy report, and that's your fault, not mine. Sure. And you can put it more gently than that, but uh, um, you know that's the general rule. And sometimes it's it's good to go to extremes and then swing back. So anyway, um, uh, scroll on down. Um, and this is this is a monthly thing. So actually, there's another line that Michael House uses, which is great. Which is if you were renting this house, how much more a month would you pay in rents to make this go away? Huh. Um, and that oftentimes flips it uh, as well, because then you can figure out like. I mean, if, if they've got health concerns and all that stuff, uh, but they can't change the equipment, probably a ventilating DHU is going to be what they need. You know, um, that's yeah. all they're going to be able to afford. There's, so there's five G's. Um, that's, that's what we got. Um, uh, so anyway, you may run into the situation where they say something's worth $8 a month and the thermostat setting 68 and you're like, we'll turn that thermostat to 70. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, we have no uh, bias as to how you solve the problem. Solve it the best way possible. Sure. Exactly. Well, All this right. is my guess based on my conversation with them, just an idea of the value of the property and maybe what, you know, things look like, but I'd say that's probably pretty close. It sounds reasonable. So that buys about 20 grand. Um, uh, that, that's, that's enough to do some damage on a house. Yep. Um, uh, that's probably going to mainly stick to shell, I would think. Like that's probably going to be 10 or 15 in shell would be my gut. Um, so yeah. you wouldn't have much left on your side. Yeah. Um, uh, but I could be wrong, but that's, that's my gut. Um, yeah, so that's we, the, since we like have the, the benefit of already having the insulation estimates, we looked at a couple of different options. One was to drill and fill walls um, with they, the contractor happens to use fiberglass for that. I, I've always, we've always used cellulose in my family business for a drill and fill situation. But um, so they had a bid to do all the exterior walls. This is like a 1920s craftsman style house. So there's likely no insulation in the wall cavities. Um, and uh, they were going to do, you know, go from the inside and drill and fill because the outside's all stucco. So it's going to be a messy project, but the price that came back, I was really surprised at how reasonable that was. I want to say it was less than seven grand to do that. It's not too <clears throat> um, um, Now, if the third floor is their main concern, though, drilling. Yeah, floor, so that was option out. one was the, was the, you know, doing the walls. I shouldn't say option one. That was a, an option or part of the, the process. The other part was they were going to demo – the uh, drywall on the upper floor pull out there's photos from like 15 years ago and somebody put like r19 fiberglass bats in unvented ceiling cavities roof roof cavities they're going to demo all that out and then spray foam the roof there you go uh and then also you'd be able to get to that um second floor ceiling third floor joist system from up there by removing some the all of the floor panels up there were like four by eight sheets of veneer uh, with, oh, a little bit of, with a little bit of like backer behind them or something. So you'd be able to like take those up and zip out two or three feet around the perimeter and, yep. and get all that taken care of. And that was another, I think three or 4,000 bucks. All the, all the drywall work by others, basically all the drywall and demo. But the, uh, the foam was three or four grand. Yeah. Wow. That's cheap. There's not a lot of, there's really not a lot of, uh, Square footage up there. Yeah. You know? Okay. 
seven, eight hundred right. square feet, and then like whatever the pitch is, like a twelve pitch or something like that. Yeah, it's going to be close to twelve usually. Yeah. Uh, well, so I mean, that's that's dirt cheap. So that uh, maybe you will have money left over for uh, um, uh, HVAC, or you get a change order. <laughs> yeah. Well, so this is feeling to me like you can a la carte them in this report, but I would also convey to them that it'd be a really good idea to do a comprehensive planning process. Sure. Yeah. Because they may need to see all of their options, have a better understanding of, of where their um Okay, so I was way off on that. The drill and fill on the walls was forty two hundred and the spray foam on the roof underside and the gable ends uh, was three grand. So that's a way, let's so seven grand for the whole thing, basically, uh, which seemed really reasonable. <laughs> yeah, that's super cheap. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that's almost one where you're just like, just do this. Just do this. Um, yeah. Let's see where it gets us. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, so, it, it, but the insulation stuff for, anybody who doesn't have building performance chops that really needs to wait is our recommendation so sure. that you don't uh, kick yourself in the nuts and not realize it yeah um, uh because uh yeah the, the cpp it a lot of it is really about it, it it's again actually mainly about the client it's helping package things and slow things down for them so they understand if i do this i can expect this and this but i won't get this Sure. If I do this, then we add that in. Um, and so it is amazing, like the CPPs that we've done, um, we aren't doing a bunch of them anymore, but they are still coming back from years ago <laughs> and executing just as designed. Um, yeah, like, and, and these are and these are twenty to $60,000 projects. Sure. Yeah, yeah, so these are pretty healthy. So anyway, um, at 150 a month, that sounds great. We'll put that in there. Um, and then uh, see the, it's almost at the bottom, by the way, I'll be sending you a recap email. Um, and the key thing is you ask, do you, uh, do you feel like you've received your value? So click yes on that. See that uh, line there? Oh, here. This one here? Yep, that one. And now hit submit. Um, actually hit validate first. We'll see if, if I missed anything. They're all sweet. There we go. Submit. Yep. And if, when you are on site, we highly, highly recommend that at this point you print the PDF. Yeah. Just in case, because you're usually going to be offline. Um, so you don't want to lose all of that information. So if sure. you print the PDF, at least you can re-enter. It sucks, but at least you can. Yeah. All right. So click client at the top right, like just a second row there. So hang on a second. Let's go back and go through what it takes to print PDF. Okay. All right, so click client, we still have to do that. There you go. Oh, that's weird, it logged us out. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know what, Ted? I think that's what happened to Mark the other day. For some reason, it's logging you out too quickly. Um, need to make a note of that, because I'll bet you that got changed by accident. That's good to see. All right, so just scroll to the bottom. Actually, you, you can anywhere, you're on a laptop, it looks like. Yes, yep. So you can just hit Control P. <clears throat> and... Microsoft print the PDF. Oh. Or that works too, whatever. Uh, so it, yeah, it doesn't matter however you do it. Okay. But that way your butt is covered just in case. Oh, yeah, you have Adobe PDF. There you are. Yeah, I don't care how you do it. There you go. Hey, you guys, that was really easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <sighs> what, this whole, uh, the questionnaire here? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, 
pulling this up, having the conversation, doing the process. I mean, it just – irrational was the word. <clears throat> this is normal. It's a new thing and you're swamped. So uh, it, high season is not the time to learn this. Um, uh, okay, so just scroll to the bottom and hit submit again. But it, it's huge and long. So the first time people look at it, they're just like, oh, crap, I'm never going to get through this. Um, <laughs> but you do. Like, it takes a little while, but yeah. you get through it. And then you know so much about the house and the client that you can make good suggestions. You're not yep. guessing anymore. And, right, so and we have the, and the suggestions, you'll see, they're pretty much here. And there are a couple of that you're going to have to add and a little bit of homework that you're going to have to do. But but the report ends up being pretty awesome because it, it gives them an understanding of, you know, their, their house, the load of the house, where the load can get to in their house, if they should even bother trying to reduce the load before replacing equipment. Um, yeah, they got all kinds of stuff to work on. All right, so all click client again. Stuff. And whether or not it makes sense to go to the next level of planning. Should they have a comprehensive planning process and how much that'll be? Because it gives you the opportunity to get an understanding of what the house, what it's going to take to do the comprehensive planning process so that you can give them a reasonable um, uh, estimate yeah. or bid or whatever of, for doing the comprehensive. Or if you're like, these clients are going to be a real pain in my tuchus, you can price it in. Right. Um, Right. It's a $3,500 comprehensive planning process instead of a $2,300 comprehensive planning process because it's not going to be, it's not going to be fun for $2,300. It's going to be fun for $3,500, but I feel like I got compensated. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. So consult analysis internal. See that line there? Three down. Yeah. Click start. And this is the other info you have to add to pop out the report. So if you yeah. scroll down, you'll see it sucked in a couple things. So there's the, uh, the blower door number yep. that you put in. Um, and then we run three load calcs. So there's where the house is now. There's where it could reasonably get to um, with a quick and dirty load calc, which you can do in five or 10 minutes. It's not a hard thing. Sure. Um, and then uh, you have to figure out what the blower door needs to be to match the current equipment. Yeah. Um, so, but we'll start with current load. So uh, do you have the current load calcs? I do. Let's see here. Are you guys able to see this or are we still on your, on the HVAC 2.0 screen? Just seeing the 2.0. Okay. That's fine. I just wanted to, yeah. wanted to know. Um, so, so here's the thing with this house is that uh, um, the loads are actually greater than the equipment capacity here. So the, oh. you know, what you need for a blower door to match is actually going to be less than what I measured. <laughs> well, that's rare, but there you yeah. go. It'll happen. Um, and I believe that that's probably true. Now, I don't, the way I'm doing this with WriteSoft, I don't have a methodology for doing the true up thing with the utility costs. Yeah. Um, but I believe that this is probably fairly accurate. Um, you know, all things considered with loads and all that, just because that upper floor, I mean, they're delivering 15 CFM to the third story attic. Uh, so. That ain't going to do it. Um, Need so like, ten x that. Yeah, so it's very cold up there and very hot up there, and so that's you know obviously has an impact. If you're putting if you're putting the actual you're capacity slow. that you have in the thermostat zone, you're going to satisfy the thermostat, and an undersized piece of equipment is going to look more properly sized. Uh, but there's massive further away room problems, right? So you know, for, from that standpoint, this may not be the best case for the, for, no, for kind we'll of throw the numbers in what it's worth. This so this, the loads different. are coming out 90 K heating and, uh, 37 total cooling. Okay. Well, I'll put them in. Okay. <clears throat> 
And this is where the EDS program that we like is really useful um, because you can very quickly, well, you can true for one really quickly. Sure. Um, but once you have it trued, you can say like, so the current wall is an R5, which is about when an ins uninsulated wall performs at, you can sure. make it 13. Um, you know, so you can change all that and really quickly get a decent load calc. Because right. the idea here isn't to land on the head of a pin. It's yep. to understand, you know, can we get this to a three ton house, basically. Right. Um, which you more than likely can. Um, okay, so proposed load calc. I've got um, I've got one of those. I did a whole separate instance in uh, in WriteSoft, which was pretty time consuming and pretty much the opposite of the process you just described. <laughs> uh, but I do have it, so I'll grab that really quick and we'll go put for it. In. <clears throat> uh, and so what I did I there is I made a guesstimation on the blower door number uh, if they did the. Uh, um, the insulation improvements that we were looking at. Well, I'd probably plug in something like a 12 or 1400. Yeah, let me see what I did. That's not that high of a blower door, frankly, for a house of that era. Yeah, I was pretty surprised. It's got a fire, a wood burning fireplace in it too. Um, so I had estimated 1668 and I think that was just a made up kind of Great. X percent off. Put it 1700, yeah, or 1668, doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. Um, and then my loads after that were 56,000 heating and 22,000 cooling. Right. Yeah, that, but 56 sounds way too freaking high still. Um, but you can put that in there if you want. Um, but that, For, yeah, yeah, just since I have it, let's go with that. And then, yeah, exactly. you know, we'll, we'll refine that process a little bit. Exactly. So then you, uh, you this know would pull That's... if we'd put in the current size. So what is the current size of the furnace? <clears throat> uh, I haven't looked at that in a while. Uh, you can guess. Is it 100,000? I think it was a 70K. Okay. 75. So 75. It was 75. There you go. And it was a condensing furnace. So, And ton. existing three ton, I believe. That's like what everybody has. Yep. Um, and the CFM 50 to match is basically going to be the same. Uh, the same as the original? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that, that seems to be, and that's unusual. Um, yeah. Normally, you're going to 3 or 4X the blower door. So, but that's, that's good enough for this purpose. Sure. Um, all right, so observations. This is something you don't have to put anything in, but if there's stuff you notice that you don't want to make a recommendation for, um, that's, this is where you put that sort of thing in. Um, so hit add new item and then be like, add it could use more insulation or something like that. Or actually, you know what? That's even not truly an observation. Come to think of it, I'm breaking my own rule. Um, uh, it would be like uh, attic insulation R8. Because that's truly an observation. Sure. Um, and that's fine for that section. Okay. Uh, so odds of success, this is something that's going to mess with your mind a little bit. Um, but, uh, well, you're going to be fine once you wrap your head around it quickly. Uh, so say they just changed the HVAC what are the odds of them solving the problems that they had? Uh, essentially zero based on the math. So There's I'd like... probably put like zero to 10. Oh, I see. High odds. Okay. That makes sense. Um, now if you're looking at air sealing and insulation, what do you think? That feels kind of high for that. Um, it would make a big impact. I think uh, maybe 40 to 60. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. 40 to 60. That works. And if they did both? Man, I, it'd be up there. Uh, 80, to 80 to 90? Yeah. We, we wouldn't ever recommend saying more than 90 or 95. It's going to bite you. you 105, are. guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you can also add other stuff there, too, if you want. Um, uh, it, uh, nothing's coming to mind immediately for this particular house. 
Uh, but like Reedy Ward is routinely putting in a different thing. Like he'll, he'll have uh, like just change a condenser unit or something like that uh, yeah. in there. Or, so you can do other stuff if you want. But we they, were uh, potentially looking at, you know, depending on the actual budget, how that came back and what they were willing to, to do is let's just do the spray foam in the attic and then do like a mini split for the upper floor. You know, and, you and the number one goal is that upper level. What's our odds of success there? Probably still going to hit that 80 to 90 for that. Though. Yep. Is that something that we would put in here, quantify yep. that in there? Absolutely. Put it in. Yeah. Add an item. Oh, oh wait a minute. Uh, sorry. Uh, that's the monthly budget part. Yeah, hit there. Yeah. yeah. My bad. <clears throat> so spray, spray foam and mini split. And you might want to make that look a little bit lower, depending. Like maybe you make it 70, 75 80. to 85. Yeah. Whatever works. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so here's the budget. So uh, you put in the 150 a month. And if they're just doing the attic uh, foam and mini split, they've got fairly high odds of you know, 20 grand being enough. Sure. So you want to call that, I don't know, 60 to 80. Seems Does that sound fair? Yeah. Um, and then you can add another budget. It'll let you add three and show what the, what it is. Okay. Um, so say you put 250 and that is 85 to 90. So that way you give them an idea or they may give you like 40 bucks a month and you tell them like 10 to 20. Yeah. So it's just like, look, you're smoking crack. Uh, <laughs> if you expect any change for this, yeah. um, like you seriously need to do space heaters and window units or and right. stop whining. And um, would you r rather light $40 per month on fire? Or would you like to, you know, get a full value out of 150? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so, and this will pop out in the report as you'll see in a little bit. All right. Sure. So observations, you don't have to change all these, but, uh, we wrote these, um, basically to serve as a checklist. Okay. Um, so if there's, it, it, you, you want to run through it and be like, uh-huh. Yeah, that applies here or not. So like you can delete that one if you don't need it, you just yeah. hit the minus. And you just make it go bye-bye. Um, but this is meant to be a checklist, again, for the newbies. And also for you. I mean, like, pilots, 30-year pilot, do they skip a checklist before they take off or land? No. Every damn time. Use the checklist. Um, that's what this is in here for. And if you, you have some pretty serious chops. So if you see something in here that should be stock, let us know. And then down the road, we'll change this so that uh, you can have your own individual one because this is biased to a climate like ours where the sure. Floridians are going to be like, you idiots, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, what, whatever. Um, but you can run through all of this and see what's going on. Um, and again, these are the observations. Right. So, you, like, it, it's just for thinking back, like, particularly the space heaters, um, window units, uh, uh, room air filters, like those are all clues. So you want to make sure that you notice those clues and you factor them into your recommendations. Sure. Um, and then also if you note it here and then later they're like, well, but you didn't like, it's in the report, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just the facts, ma'am. Tur turns out you have to read it. <clears throat> yes, exactly. Uh, okay. So next step is, um, the levels of recommendations. So there are four there levels. Are four levels. Level, level one and two are basically about making them try everything because you're going to have a lot of people that need to bump themselves up in budget. Mm -hmm. So if they don't try all the simple stuff and realize that it's a failure on everything, their budget's not going to get where you need it to be. Um, so if you need to wait three or six months for the job to come back, do you really care? No. Hopefully not. Um, you know, hopefully you're busy enough. It's like, yeah, whatever. I'll talk to you next summer. Yeah, pipeline. Uh, yeah, exactly. So you, you give them stuff to try. 
um, and the pricing is not showing. If you invest too much time in people that don't have pain, you will be, that's a losing money investment. Yeah. So you need to let them discover their pain at their own pace. Yeah. And this allows a way of putting them in a waiting room where they can marinate on their pain. Sure. Yeah. yeah until you're like, I'm ready to see you now. Um, uh, Performance purgatory. Yes. Well, it is. we all need this to some degree. Um, if something doesn't bother you much, don't fix it. So, but try this stuff. Uh, right. So anyway, level one is really cheap stuff. Um, it's you, it's meant to be take what they have already and make slight changes. As you can say, education, let's just turn your bath fan on and let it run all the time. Well, it sure. drones a lot. Well, you could change your bath fan um, <laughs> or whatever it might be. Um, so keep scrolling down. You can just leave all those in there. Yeah. But again, this is a checklist. Um, and then level two is, uh, we're going to bump that actually to, to 200 to 2000. Okay. Um, and this might be where you put some other diagnostics in or whatever. Um, uh, but you know, you're suggesting the air quality monitor, let's change your range hood. Um, let's change your bath fan. These are all things that are a good idea to do and don't need to be redone. So they're not wasting money but they also aren't super likely to get them where they want to go. Um, but they may need to try all this stuff. Sure. But the idea is level one and two, you don't hear from them about. Um, they go in, you know, it's a, I, I remember a really awful plane ride one time. We circled for like 45 minutes and I heard like five people puke on the plane. Um, <laughs> it was just like this the whole time. Like yeah. You just want to have them spinning, waiting to land. Uh, <laughs> and then at some point they'll be like, oh, look, I'm ready to land. I'm ready to actually, you know, do the project the, the right way. Um, and if this got them there, that's good. Um, and then a lot of people are just going to fall off the radar because they realize it's not really a problem. Um, and either way is fine. Um, Either way, you're helping them. And, and yeah. the key is to help the client, right? Exactly. Okay, so keep scrolling to level three. Um, this we're finding, you want to keep this list quite short. This is basically what you're going to bid on. So this is the work you want to do. Um, and there's going to be a big spread, like the first one you see, HVAC replacement. Um, so I'll attach the bid. And, you know, five grand might be changing the condensing unit or putting in a DHU. 20 grand is a complete system. Um, and you can change those numbers to whatever you want to match sure. what your bid's going to be. Um, but you can see this is all HVAC focused. And then level four is building performance. That's the CPP. Gotcha. Um, and then you're done. So if you keep scrolling just a little bit further, you'll get to the bottom and there's a summary where you can put in whatever, you know, it's a, you know, your, your house is particularly screwed up. Um, normally I wouldn't recommend the CPP, but this is a house that I would um, or whatever you want to put in, but sure. hit submit. And then back to client top, right. And um, consult report, click refresh. I don't know that it will be an issue, but if you go and make a change in anything and you click refresh, it will change the report for you again. If you yeah. don't click refresh, it will look like what it did before. Sure. Um, so now click PDF and fingers crossed everything works like it's supposed to. Yay. So there's, there's some stuff in here that is not perfect yet. Sure. Um, but uh, if you scroll down, I mean, it, it makes a pretty nice report automatically. Yeah, it does. So there's your goals. And so it shows the first three. And by the way, it shows them in whatever order you put them in. So okay. if they give them to you and you end up with a six first and then a nine second, it's incumbent on you to click up on that one and put the nine above the six because it's going it. to come off in the order that you put it in. 
There's the layer, leakage to square footage ratio. So note that all the information we put in is popping out here. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, that did, well, yeah, that kind of showed where it's supposed it to be. It is remarkable how much time I have spent in the past trying to describe for people what the equipment they have now versus what we would propose versus what they need versus, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, when you write that out. <laughs> 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 oh, man, that's so much more useful. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. This has been 10 years of Ted and I both beating our head against the wall to get here. So there you go. They get an understanding of their odds. Yeah. Um, you know, interestingly enough, on another one of these, that same project that I told you the insulator uh, was talking about paybacks. Um, when he went, when I sent him out to, to look at the house so he could get measurements to put together the estimate for the customer, I, I followed up with her and she said, yeah, I meant to follow up with the insulator to ask him how many degrees of temperature I'll get back if I do his bid. And I was just kind of like, holy smokes, like that is asking for a lot for a guy that's just showing up to give an estimate to do some spray foaming. Yeah. On somatic knee walls, you know. Yeah, and that's not so a I, reasonable thing. I, I got them all back together. I'm like, we need to reset some expectations here. <laughs> and uh, again, another, a good testimonial for this process. Cause that's probably a question that would have been headed off at the pass. Had we gone through this, uh, this, you know, level of detail. And the beautiful thing is this doesn't take very long to put together. Right. Um, I mean, when you get back to the office, my hope is in under an hour, you can run load calcs, you can pop this report off, you can do your bid. Um, and they get this really nice package of stuff to decide from. Right. Um, so yeah, you saw everything that's hiding in there. And this is. part of it, Nate, this is probably the part that will save me the most time because I'm okay. routinely reinventing the wheel on just about every report that I send out. And right. uh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure I'm <laughs> preaching to the choir there. Uh, <laughs> you know, How are you to fast, but, I reinvent uh, the wheel repeatedly. Oh man, I can't tell you how many different versions of the same report I've written uh, to say essentially the same things, but in like ultra detailed, like for your house, you know, such and such person's bedroom, this, and you know, like, it's just like, okay, uh, that's, yeah. And you can still do that here if you want. Like sure. these line items will just be longer. Your observations will be longer. So right. what? Um, uh, I, I do like the simplicity of this though. I mean, just, it really cuts it to the quick and you know, what's the real value and, and moving to the next process rather than just dwelling on, you know, Hey, I got two weeks worth of uh, data crunching numbers to tell you essentially, you know, way more detail than maybe what's necessary to get us to the next step. So, so do you yeah. think you're going to use this now? I'm going to, yeah. Good. That was the goal. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the impediments that looking back um, would have been helpful for us to help you better so that you wouldn't have been, or is there no solution to that? I don't know that... <sighs> You know, obviously having like going through this process was hugely beneficial because it got me to do the, you know, the full investigation of what, you know, what the actual details are, because it just, it's just like kind of anything when you perceive something to be of a certain level of, you know, uh, time input or thought input, and you feel like you're overwhelmed or you feel like you've got a huge 
laundry list of things to do. Uh, really all it took here was, you know, actually doing it. Um, and it happens that you guys walk me through it. I don't know that that's sustainable. Having this video is going to be helpful for folks that want to cruise through this and see what it's all about without having to like physically go do it. And you can skip ahead to the parts you're interested in that sort of thing. But I don't know that you guys outside of just, you know, harping on, Hey, it's important to do this and you're going to find that's going to save you some time because it will just looking at this process. Uh, and the better you get at it, the more time you're going to save, you know, like, I don't know what the number of these things is going to take for me to get real good at it. Like I am with my current process, but it probably isn't many. Um, you know, the harder part for me is just going to be, um, streamlining my, my presentation of this information during the interview. Uh, and I don't think that's going to be, that's, that's like, in there by the way. Um, yeah. we, we, we zipped right by them, but it's the, the basics of building science. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's just going to be, you know, like there's some stuff that I've just, you know, naturally wrote into my brain. So when I'm having conversations with people, it all comes out in a certain order after this many years. And this is going to be a little bit of a retool there, but it's a, I think it's a valuable one. It's not, uh, you can, not, you can do your thing too. Mm -hmm. Um, cause uh, w one thing that we could use help with is, uh, there's not a ton of people in the country with really strong building performance chops. So experiment. So, I mean, what I'd suggest is the first couple times you do it to the letter. Sure. Um, uh, and it's it just like when you're learning something, like when you're learning the dance, you have to learn the dance, the steps exactly as they are. Right. And then you start combining them differently and then you start playing with them. Um, uh, Throwing a little improv. Yep. And the beautiful thing is because this is going to track all your leads, if you actually put them in, um, uh, you're going to be able to watch your closing ratio go up and down. So if you start tanking, you got to be like, so what did I change? And yeah. go do that because yeah. I tanked my own closing ratio a number of times trying different things. Sure. Um, and then came back around in this order when it came to selling the CPP, which is as a solo operator, that's the only way that I make decent money. Um, uh, but I batted a thousand for like the first six once we went to this order. And then I was like, I'm selling people these things that they really shouldn't have. <laughs> like it's overkill for their house. Like I, I feel bad. Um, and so I started backing off on that. Uh, and letting it free flow a little bit more. But this order is really specific. Um, so there's a reason that everything is in here the way that it is. Sure. When you become a Sandler expert, you'll see the specificity yeah. in the why, because it's it's pure raw Sandler. Um, with the exception of, of we don't do um, uh, yes, no, no, maybes, because we're already past the point of uh, – you're not doing a presentation. And, and in Sandler, um, you do do a free presentation and, and you get paid for doing that presentation by having the person at the point where they are ready to make a decision. Sure. Um, we don't care if you're ready to make a decision because you're paying us to be here. Right. So that, so you make your decision on, on your own timeline. Um, and and we like that better because it ends up being um, really a great relationship. The relationship with the client has no areas of friction. Um, and the only area of, uh, that friction sometimes occurs is at budget. And you just have to explain to them that I left my salesman hat in the truck when you decided to pay me to be here. So you're not making any decisions on what to buy today. In fact, I'm not giving you any quotes today. The right. quotes will follow up with the report. I will, when I go back to my truck and leave, I will put my salesman hat back on and you will get a consultative report and a sales report. And so you don't ever, you won't feel yourself in a position where I'm hard closing you 
because you don't ever have to see me again. And my sales presentation will come without me being there. Sure. And we think what's going to start happening is guys are going to be selling from emails. Yeah. And they're going to be astonished by that because that breaks all the rules. It does. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and once you sell a $50,000 job from an email, you're going to be like, how did that happen? Yeah, I'm going to buy a shirt as soon as that happens and just put that on the front and walk around the office with it. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> so it he wants an autograph <laughs> <laughs> well that's what we want i mean the the goal of this is to substantially change the industry and how things are done um and the the nice thing is unlike most sales processes out there there's really solid science and technical chops underneath all this yeah um, so, I mean, you can fix really big problems if you need to. So you can right. send a newbie in, uh, you know, to play with sharks and he'll be okay. Um, you know, he better, he's going to need to give a, a little push towards the CPP so you can bail him out. Um, but uh, he'll get there. I mean, so this, this handles everything from a, a bump on the knee um, to a, an ICU visit. Yeah. So, and you can see where if you have a new person, and you have them do a CPP, or I'm mean, sorry, they do a visit for two or three of their friends and family. That's all they need. Now they can go out and do it with clients. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I can't do this to my wife. <laughs> What's that? I'm going to do this process with my wife, I think. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I just, she, and she will just absolutely love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And that'll probably be the only, only practice you need. Yeah. Yeah. I'm comfortable doing it. What about I your, I don't know if you remember Nate, when I posted on, I don't even remember which of the sites it was now, but uh, I posted all the screenshots of thermostat reading and like all the temperatures in my room because I got the, Oh, the baby monitor says it's 78. We really got to get control of the temperature in the kid's room. I'm like, I had a meltdown. I was doing a load calc at the kitchen table at like 12, 15 in the morning, ran out to the truck, grabbed psychrometers, was running around, waving my arms around like a moron, and then gave her a 30 minute spiel while she's laying in bed in the dark about Duke. And then I, that was the moment I'm like, wow, she must really love me. Wow. <laughs> no excuse for this behavior. <clears throat> Our, our our ladies generally have to put up with a bunch of crap. I know my best. So. Oh man, yeah, she's heard way more about uh, load calcs and and HVAC performance than she probably has ever cared for in a lifetime. But uh, that's uh, part of the package, I guess. So, yep. So run through this with her, see what she thinks, and then um, uh, your CSR is going to be super important too, because when the phone calls come in, um, uh, and it, we aren't quite there yet, but we, we will be in the very near future where we'll have the intake form uh, so that you can give them the AB choice. Do you want a free quote or comfort console? Here's um, something cool that's happening here is that uh, we do a lot of um, home warranty work. Oh, interesting. So our service techs go out to a warranty response of, I got no cooling or it doesn't seem to be working right, whatever. And we do a lot of training in house here uh, for the folks that are what I would consider to be HVAC 1.0 and like just talking in very basic levels about what we have the ability to achieve with this process. Mm -hmm. And so they'll go through and they'll run a, you know, their, their typical call on a, on a no cooler or a, you know, not performing as expected call. And uh, a lot of times I'm getting a lot of kicked leads from those folks of like, the equipment's hitting all my numbers, um, but we have this guy at our office and, you know, I'm just looking around, I'm seeing there's some crawl space stuff going on here. There's some duct stuff going on. We probably got some house stuff going on here too. And, and we've got a guy who can kind of figure all that out. So I'm making a phone call with that like hot lead of, I don't actually have an air conditioning problem per se, but I probably do in a different way. <laughs> and that's been really successful for us uh okay. in addition to just our regular service calls for a regular clientele you know that we've had for a long time 
Um, whereas before we come out, you know, hey, your system's clean, it's functioning properly. Uh, you know, we still don't have a real solution for you for that seven or eight degree temperature difference to this room. Now we do. You know, if you wanted to fix that, would you know, would you be interested? Here's a guy. So I'm getting a lot of leads, not folks necessarily calling in from scratch and asking for a heating and cooling replacement or something, but like our guys are physically in the field and then making that recommendation. And it's really remarkable how how qualified those leads are. Uh, you know, <laughs> just from pain. the standpoint of they're like ready to pull the trigger on yeah. at least the evaluation, you know. Yes. Uh, well, I, mean, I can't tell you how many times here in the last two weeks we've gotten, we got an uncomfortable upper floor and we want to buy a mini split like tomorrow, you know, and it's like, well, let's go take, <laughs> a, uh, we'd love to sell you a mini split tomorrow, but it, you know, what if we had a better process where we might find a better solution? You know? So, yeah, I think the service techs are going to be clutch in this. Um, so it, it, Ted, um, back when he was practicing in New York, because uh, New York made energy audits free and destroyed his business model yeah. about 10 years ago. Thank you. Um, Thank you, government. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you got to love the government. Um, uh, and, and now their whole program has collapsed, too. It's gone. Um, so good job, guys. Good job. Um, <laughs> way to take all the value out. Um, but uh, it, he worked with uh, his energy auditor buddy, um, who actually does our modeling. And uh, um, so Ted would say something as a sales guy, and then Todd would come in and say the exact same thing as the technical auditor. Yep. And Ted would come back, well, Todd said that we should do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the techs have an unusual amount of power. Um, yep. Uh, like I've so noticed that exact system. thing. Uh, if I go out on a you know, replacement sale. And I'm like, Ooh, wow, you really, you really should have this, that, or the other, you know, evaluation, blah, 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 whatever. And they're just kind of like, yeah, what about my free estimate for the new air conditioner? Yeah. But if our service that goes out and says that same thing, they'll warm them up to like, man, you need to replace the furnace. You need a humidifier. You need blah, blah, blah. And they're like, Oh, we got all this stuff. What's cost, you know, <laughs> it's really remarkable. And it's, it's just that, you know, being on the contracting side of the HVAC, it's that that's been kind of part of the learning curve for me, uh, you know, coming from the consulting side is like, there's just so much clout that a, that a technician has, um, especially when it's a repeat customer and it's the same guy that's in the house all the time. There's some value there. So. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, there's a lot to be said when, so your system's five years old, you got all, all kinds of times left. Your system's 10 years old. You know, you probably got you know, three to eight years left. Um, and then you start seeing stuff and going wrong. Like, all right, so next year or two, you probably need to figure this out. And then you kick them into this process. And like, so yeah. you don't need to buy it, but it's good if you know what you're going to buy. Right. Um, so that the day that it dies, you're like, all right, I want this piece of equipment and this piece of equipment. Um, we'll be there tomorrow. Sure. Um, so yeah, the, the service techs are going to be huge. So are the CSRs. And then the process is also designed to tackle online leads. Um, so, uh, and they all get, they all get the same questions in a slightly different order. Um, Cause I, online, you don't want to ask name and email first off. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you, you want to give them some value before you, you ask for something. Else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here's some homework to do so that we can get to the nitty gritty. Yes. Um, are you sending out HVAC 101 routinely? No, I'm not. Uh, and I don't have an excuse for that. So uh, shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, go for it. We keep hearing uh, stories. Last night, there were a couple more where it's just like, yeah, they, they read it and they're like, I want the inverter. Um, yeah. I mean, how many people do you show up at their house? Like, no, I don't even quote me in the single stage. I don't care. Just give me the inverter. Yeah, no, that doesn't normal. That doesn't seem to happen organically. <laughs> no, no. But it, like you, you send out a free file, um, you know, and give them a day or two to look it over uh, and you're going to sell a bunch of good stuff like that. And sure. Their lives will be better because of it. Better equipment delivers better results. So anyway, figure that out. Um, you, you can always, what a lot of guys are doing right now is uh, uh, you, you put a, a link in the email. So it'll say like HVAC 101, click here. Sure. And you just click it and it automatically downloads the PDF for them on their computer yeah. Yeah. Uh, rather than making the mother may I through a, a sign up process. Sure. Um, and that's getting added. Like Dustin Cole does that in Louisiana 
for every single invoice that goes out. Oh, wow. Our, our clients have found this guide helpful. You know, perhaps you will too, or whatever sure. his wording is. And uh, he's starting to see people coming back from that. Um, uh, because like Hausch is, uh, Michael Hausch, he's like, I don't really trust my service techs to give a spiel. Because um, one issue is a lot of service techs are not people people. Right. Um, you know, they're, they're like, um, so which way to the basement so I can fix your equipment? Um, you know, and they're kind of stuttery and they're probably on the spectrum. Um, uh, you don't want to put too much weight on the service tax to do sales. Sure. Um, but if they feel like they're genuinely helping the client, they'll do more. Yep. So, okay. Silas, thank you. Any other questions? No, I don't think so. I'm sure as soon as we get off, I'll come up with four or five, but, uh, no, this is this has been great. Good, and thank you for being game for recording it because yeah, uh, this will be for other people. Anytime I can get my face out there, it's uh, it's really beautiful. Um, my mom keeps telling me I have a face for radio, so I don't know what that means. But, uh, Gotta love it when your mom tells you that <laughs> <laughs> a face only a mother could love. My That's mother right. doesn't love my face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, in real, I'm in real trouble. <laughs> Well, at least your wife loves you. Yeah, there you <laughs> she'll, go. She'll listen to you talk about dew point after midnight. Yep, I know. That's how I know I've got her locked down. Is that <laughs> probably get her to listen to anything. So. <laughs> well, we'll upload this video. I'll make sure I friend her and uh, tag her. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks again. Yeah, yeah thanks really guys. Pleasure, so, and yeah, any questions? Just ping us in the group, man. Cool. Um, we're here for you. Perfect. We'll see you on a Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really appreciate it. All right. So come back Monday. Hopefully, where you've run this for your house. Yeah, I'll have some. I'll have yeah, some lovely. insights there. Yeah. Post post on Facebook after you do it with your wife. Okay. Love to love to hear what her what her comments are. Okay. Yeah, she'll. I think she'll have good feedback. She's. Uh, she's like a real life uh, marketing professional in the real world. Uh, awesome. so like I. I love to get her opinion at times. Although most of the time she's smarter than I am, and I don't understand what she said and all the acronyms she used. But uh, I believe it's very valuable. <laughs> You just don't understand what that value actually is. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, can't really apply it because it's just way over my head. But uh, I have a, no doubt that it's really important. Well, come back with her feedback because uh, this process ain't done. Um, oh, you know, it's, not it's by a long good. shot. You're the guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Right go, go break it. Tell us what breaks. Okay. All right. Well, have a good day, man. Sounds good. You guys too. Thank you. Later, See you, buddy. <laughs>